Hi everyone, this is Bree Rhodes. I'm the Director of Math, Science, and STEM on the Academic Content Team within the Office of Teaching and Learning here at the department. And I'm here today to conduct this webinar, which is a deep dive into the math approach and the suite of resources that are available as part of the department's statewide tutoring strategy, Accelerate. You can find general guidance documents and a webinar kickoff recording on the Accelerate landing page. I'm going to start with just a brief overview. Accelerate is the department's equal access, just in time tutoring strategy. This model is dependent on identifying, celebrating, and building upon the assets that students bring to learning experiences. Capitalizing on students' assets allows educators to address unfinished learning in an equitable way by ensuring every student engages in grade level content rather than delaying grade appropriate math experiences through disconnected work that's better suited for earlier grades. Acceleration in math means strategically connecting unfinished learning opportunities to current work by building specific prerequisite skills and scaffolding in supports within the context of new learning. You'll hear references to the words accelerate or acceleration throughout this presentation. That's because not only is Accelerate the name of the agency strategy, but this word is also the cornerstone of an effective approach to addressing unfinished math learning in an equitable way. When we talk about acceleration, we are talking about a type of intervention that is proactive. It is tutoring through extra time. It builds skills that students need in order to access upcoming lessons. And it is based on student specific learning needs, which is based on data. We also want to be clear about what acceleration is not. Acceleration is not remediation, which is deficit based. Acceleration is not teaching skills in isolation in a way that is not connected to current learning. So when we think of remediation, we might think of what teachers did a long time ago when we would play catch up at the beginning of the year for a few weeks by teaching previous grade level content. We know that this is not effective and is not what is best to support student learning. So acceleration is not a remediation based approach of skills in isolation. Additionally, this acceleration strategy is not a replacement for more intensive interventions that learners might need. While teachers could use the Accelerate materials for one type of intervention, it may not be the entirety of what students need to address their individualized plans. So on our agenda today, this webinar will provide a brief overview of the Accelerate Math guidance and resources. We'll clearly define the department's purpose of the strategy as it relates to mathematics, then we'll outline the acceleration approach that is the foundation of the provided resources. And finally, we'll take a tour of the Accelerate Math resources themselves with a deep dive into an example. So first, for our purpose, we believe that every student in Louisiana schools can achieve grade level standards in math by ensuring they have access to on grade level instruction every day through a high quality curriculum. It's essential that supports provided to access are timely and that are, they're directly connected to that new learning. To ensure both of these goals, it's necessary for every teacher to be trained in implementation of the high quality curriculum and to collaboratively plan instruction and supports for students. The backbone of this Accelerate strategy is rooted in strong evidence on best practices for tutoring and addressing unfinished learning that fall into three pillars, intentional structures, high quality materials, and effective instruction. For maximum impact, these pillars must be implemented in tandem. So school leaders control the structures in a system to support and implement any program. To set up the structure for a successful Accelerate program, leaders must ensure equity and access by reserving time in the daily schedule as needed to support this high dosage tutoring. Leaders must also protect core instruction for every student. Scheduling Accelerate must not remove any student from regular math class time. 
High quality materials are the bedrock of quality instruction in both regular class time and in tutoring sessions. School leaders should ensure that teachers and students have access to and use resources that are directly connected to that high quality core curriculum in order to most effectively prepare learning in the student's immediate future. Teachers address unfinished learning by scaffolding that content to ensure readiness for every student to access lessons in upcoming weeks and in coordination with that core construction instruction that is being taught. Lastly, effective instructional practices that are delivered by educators will substantially accelerate knowledge and skills in math for students with unfinished learning. Effective instruction is driven by evidence. Educators use timely formative assessments to identify student needs through high quality curriculum embedded diagnostic assessments and tasks to identify those learning opportunities that are connected to upcoming lessons. This evidence should be used to flexibly group students by common needs. It should be collected in both regular classroom and tutoring sessions. It should be monitored for progress and analyzed for real time student needs. Instruction and tutoring should be provided by effective teachers in the grade and content area that they are tutoring. These teachers should have received curriculum training and on the job feedback. Now we're going to talk about our approach in math. The approach in math focuses on scaffolding previous grade level conceptual understanding. The coherence in the math standards provides teachers an explicit pathway to understand the development of student mathematical understanding. The approach in math is scaffolding prerequisite conceptual understanding in a timely manner so that those connections to current grade level content are explicit. The acceleration cycle should be used as a structure of continuous planning and responding to address student needs. The cycle consists of four phases, diagnose, plan, deliver, and monitor. We're going to dive into each of these pieces of the cycle for just a moment. To diagnose, administer high quality curriculum embedded diagnostics for math, such as LEAP360 diagnostics and interims, Again, high quality curriculum unit or module pre-assessments, collected student classwork, and even Louisiana's Eureka acceleration tools. The data should not be limited to multiple choice sources. And this should include work from students that's evident of their thinking and their understanding at a moment in time preceding a particular lesson set. So for example, as this applies to math, LEAP360 diagnostic data should be reviewed, but this shouldn't be the only source of information to support the need for tutoring or to identify students for tutoring, because that is based on a piece of prerequisite knowledge months into the school year, and things may have changed by that time. So those larger scale diagnostics should be utilized as a cue to screen for readiness in these smaller bite-sized examples that I mentioned later in the school year. Next, we plan. Plan for the timing and the content for that acceleration support. Tutors should review the provided accelerate resources, make adjustments based on the needs of those individual students. During collaborative planning, there might be collaborative planning going on among tutors, also among the classroom core instruction teacher and the tutor if it's not the same person. All of that needs to be done collaboratively and those tutors and educators should be discussing when and with which students those needed accelerations will support. Um, analyze data collected from the diagnostics during planning. Analyze those samples of student work to then plan those tutoring sessions that are tailored to student needs, utilizing the appropriate resources from our math acceleration lessons. And a little bit later, I'll be going over some resources that are also available during the next phase, which is deliver. So during the deliver phase, just-in-time supports designed for alignment to high quality curriculum are implemented. Qualified tutors should meet with students one-on-one -on -one, or with small groups who have common needs to deliver that connected just-in-time support through many lessons and activities that accelerate access by scaffolding what they're doing in the tutoring sessions to the most immediate directly connected grade level content students are learning in class. Next, to monitor, use daily student work from tasks embedded in the curriculum and student work from the tutoring sessions to monitor progress. Information gained about student understanding 
allows teachers to have timely data with which to further diagnose needed potential learning. It's important to note that this cycle will be engaged in repeatedly over short periods of time at the cohort class and tutoring group level. So it is a continuous cycle of diagnosing, planning, delivering instruction, monitoring, and cycling back through. All in service of meeting the needs of individual students. Now we're gonna dive into the resources themselves. And I just wanted to acknowledge that this idea of providing just-in-time support to accelerate access to grade level mathematics isn't necessarily new. However, it is more urgent than ever. We know this past school year, there have been many interruptions to teaching and learning. And these resources have been designed to help support tutoring to accelerate that access again to on grade level content. So, Tools to support the concept of acceleration as a strategy to address student learning opportunities have been present on our K-12 math planning page for many years. Existing resources on the department's math planning page have recently been rebranded. So these are two of them listed here. They've been rebranded. The content and structure of these resources have not changed, but the, the naming and the titling and the language we are using has. The term remediation is associated with teaching skills in isolation from grade level work, as I mentioned earlier, and remediation is not associated with the kind of just-in-time supports that I'm describing in this webinar. So as such, you may have previously been familiar with our grade level remediation guides and Eureka remediation tools. Those have been updated. So they're now rebranded as learning acceleration guidance and Eureka Acceleration Tools. So that language that we're using is better matching this best practices research-based approach to addressing unfinished learning. So these newly titled documents that are linked on this slide, they are also available on our K-12 math planning page on our website. They can be utilized along with student work samples and other data to diagnose those areas of unfinished learning in math and plan for those tutoring opportunities. Learning acceleration guidance documents like the grade five sample pictured here quickly identify prerequisite and co-requisite standards for each math standard in every grade and course for kindergarten through algebra two. These documents allow educators to take a bite-sized look at coherence both within the current grade level and from one grade level prior. Acceleration tools are built to support the listed grade levels and topics that you see here. So provided in each of these tools are short three question screeners on prerequisite standards for specific topics in Eureka Math. The tools also provide actions teachers can take to address the identified learning opportunities through linked prior grade level resources. The new Accelerate Math resources, which were just released on February 1st of 2021, are built as just-in-time supports to upcoming classroom content in order to ensure students' readiness for grade level math by outlining tutoring content to specific to an identified group of lessons. So for this spring release, there are 15 sets of resources to support two hours each week or 30 hours of tutoring total that are provided. Currently available is content specific to Eureka Math for grades K-8 and illustrative math for grades six to eight. For each grade level, resources will accelerate to the lessons listed in column one. So link to column one is a Google, Google Slides presentation. This outlines notes for tutors to consider, suggested problems, and the discussions to have with students. So the link in that first column is the actual resource that be, can be student facing, but also includes planning resources for the teacher. I'm going to actually take you on a dive into one in just a moment. Also shown here on this main grade by grade level landing page though, are a few other things. Column two lists the content of that tutoring session. So you can see the area that that session focuses on topic wise, for example, sums and differences within a hundred. Also shown are the grade level standards tutoring sessions are meant 
to address and that foundational standard that students are working to master within those. And then when available and relevant, you'll see in the final column under resources, links to virtual manipulatives, Desmos activities, and then student PDF handouts as applicable. So this is an example of one of the actual slide decks that are linked within that first column of the grade level document that we were just looking at. So in this example, this is for grade two Eureka math module four for lessons 11 through 15. These first two slides um, identify the content of the two included one hour sessions that can be you know flexibly adapted but it is set up that way for two one hour sessions to be delivered in a week and all of that content with it is within here so these first two slides just identify that content then when we get to slide three there is additional information for the tutor so this is kind of a tutor only slide it has all of the information that was on that main landing page for the grade level but it's all right here at a great at a glance to make it really easy and grab and go for busy tutors um, as they're transitioning maybe from a long school day or something else into a tutoring session so it's all right here as well so right here you'll see Again, like standards information, vocabulary, rigor information, links to the same resources that are linked on that grade level page in the resources section, notes for teachers, anything really essential, important to remember or consider, um, just an kind of at a glance overview in preparation that teacher, uh, teachers or teacher tutors might need to utilize as they're preparing for these sessions for the week. And then slide four on all of these slide decks just kind of clarifies the intended delivery method and how these were designed. So these sessions were designed for one hour virtual instruction over the course of two tutoring sessions a week, but tutoring can be adjusted, right? So it tutors should adjust to like the mode of delivery, the time, the tech and resources available. So these might be utilized differently if you are interfacing with students face to face versus over zoom or some other kind of virtual setting all of that um, should be adapted to your individual needs. So in thinking about how this might be utilized, it can absolutely be grab and go and that's the reason they were designed this way as Google slide decks. But also um, don't be constrained to that so elements of these Google slides presentations can be delivered as is they can be written or printed out on paper or whiteboard over a document camera. They can be imported into other presentation software or platforms. They could be projected and used with students who are physically present. Um, but that is just like an additional note on the delivery and kind of the intention of these slides. And then from that, it actually jumps right into the content for the week. I wanted to adjust my view a little bit because I wanted to show both the notes and the slides themselves within the same slide deck. So the next slide is just a welcome slide. This is on every set of tutoring resources. This is something if I were delivering tutoring sessions to students virtually or face to face, I'd probably have this projected or viewable for students just as they're coming in and entering the tutoring session. The objective is right there and the materials that students need are right there. So perhaps I told them to come to tutoring with their whiteboards. This would be just a reminder of what materials they're actually going to be utilized. It's all right there for me. And then from, the, from there, you can actually see the tutoring slides. And I wanted to show the notes section. So there are actual problem sets samples of questions, interactions with students right here on the actual slide itself. But additionally, there is information within the slide for those tutors. So you'll see sample like conversations that tutors can have about these problems or problem sets, um, any kind of like critical notes that those tutors might need is right there within the notes of the slide deck. So again, all of 
these resources that we're releasing this spring for every grade level with these slide decks are designed and structured in the same way. So at the time of this webinar, five sets of resources per grade have been released. The remaining 10 sets per grade are being released on a rolling basis through this spring. So an additional five weeks are coming out February 15th, and then another five weeks per grade level on February 26th. And then know that the spring release will not be the end of this. So additional resources to support this work for the summer and into the fall and winter will be posted on a rolling schedule beginning this summer. So more information is posted on the Accelerate landing page on our website. So now we're gonna do a bit of a deep dive and an actual example of what this might look like going through the Accelerate cycle. And we're gonna use an example from grade seven, module three, topic A. So I'm gonna take you through an example of using all of the resources, new and old, and how a tutor or a tutor and teacher pair working together would work with each other to move through that data cycle. So just as a reminder, here is that acceleration cycle that I was mentioning. So first, we'll diagnose the need. So the students in today's example are approaching instruction in math class in grade seven, module three of Eureka. So display is the first page of the Eureka acceleration tool to support this particular module and lesson set. So as you see here, students need to be ready for the work of standards 7EEA1 and 7EEA2. So to engage in this work, students should be proficient in the sixth grade standards, 6EEA3, and 6EEA4. So the first screener tool from these resources is shown. You can see up there, this is part A, which corresponds to 6EEA3, one of those two standards that students should display understanding of from sixth grade in order to engage in the seventh grade grade level standards that are coming up. So in our example, every student would complete the three questions aligned to both of these prerequisite standards. I'm showing you the first one here on the slide. So the student data from the short assessment, along with any information collected throughout the year, should be examined during this diagnose phase. So remember, LEAP 360 diagnostics and interims, high quality curriculum unit or module pre-assessments, collected student classwork can all be used as evidence for or against the need for support. Evidence should show student thinking. Remember that LEAP 360 diagnostic data should be referenced, but should not be the only source of information as evidence for need. So by module three, students have done a lot of math this year. That initial missing understanding may have already been addressed. So short screeners like this one provide time relevant information and can be analyzed alongside student classwork to really get a picture of where they are ahead of the learning that's coming up. So in this example, the teacher has administered the grade seven module three acceleration tool screener. She noticed that many of her students understand most of the grade six questions. So if you are looking at the screen, this little table um, up towards the top right is an example of how students performed on these two screeners. The teacher noticed that almost all students missed that third question. So the unfinished learning was surrounding the ability to see how to factor or undo the distributive property. So when applying the concepts, most students were successful. Most students in the last two columns will need support. So those students who got only one correct or got no items correct. When analyzing their work, papers were blank or answers were nonsensical. So the teachers observed that missing understanding about common terms and operations on expressions with all but one of the students previously. And then the teacher noted that one student was feeling ill that day and turned in a blank paper. So the teacher will follow up with that student when he returns to school. But 
A blank paper might mean that that teacher chooses to administer the screener to him upon his return or look at other classwork to determine whether that student needs support. So then the teacher decides to use the versions of the third question as a warm up for class in the next few days and rescreen on this particular skill on Friday since most students missed question three. The students in the last two columns, so the students who missed one or all of the problem, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> the students who missed two or all of the problems would be those students that the teacher is going to identify as receiving that tutoring support. So for those nine students who showed evidence of needing support, they're going to work with the tutor during tutoring time, they're going to be split into small groups. And they're going to work on the written grade seven, module three topic A sessions for two weeks. So the tutor and teacher meet during common planning and they review the screener data for those students to look for those anticipated mistakes. Then they agree on which problems to collect and review from the tutoring session as evidence of student understanding. The tutor then delivers the support in small groups of no more than three or four, collecting the evidence agreed upon with the teacher. So ideally the tutor and teacher would be the same person and the support would just be an extension of classroom instruction. However, I wanna acknowledge that this may also be a pairing of professionals who work very closely together throughout the diagnose, plan, deliver, and monitor cycle with each team member taking responsibility for different parts of the cycle and maintaining communication throughout the process. So perhaps the another math teacher from seventh grade is actually the one delivering the tutoring sessions and the core math teacher is the one administering the diagnostics and collecting some of the student work. That is also appropriate and that would just mean there needs to be this clear collaborative planning and communication that's going on. So if it is more than one professional, as an example, the classroom teacher might handle the diagnose step each time and then plan with the, the tutor to determine who receives the support. And then the tutor would then deliver the actual supports. And then both of those educators could then monitor along the way and repeat the cycle and continue to plan forward. So in the monitor phase, after monitoring student understanding, the teacher and tutor will determine which students still need additional support and they'll forward plan to restart this data cycle. So the next group of students needing support should be identified after considering their readiness for the upcoming lessons. Groups in next week's tutoring sessions may be the same students, but could be a completely different set of students who need supports. This is why it's essential to return to that diagnose phase and continually monitor student progress so that students receive supports based on their specific needs. So I hope that was helpful, just kind of doing a run through of what that cycle might look like. Right here ahead of this webinar and recording it for you all, we try to anticipate some potential questions that tutors or leaders who are implementing this work might have. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of questions, but rest assured, I will also provide you at the end with some contact information. We're happy to answer any additional questions you might have. So number one, we thought folks might ask, well, what if my school or my school system uses a curriculum other than Eureka math or illustrative math? Because you mentioned that these resources were designed to align with those. How can these resources help me? So these resources can support systems who are using other high quality curriculum in a few ways. The research and model behind the design of, of this work, everything I've talked about accelerating access to on grade level content through just in time supports, with the acceleration cycle, all of that is research based and it's applicable to all high quality materials and it's applicable to all high quality good math teaching. So investigate the standards alignment provided in the Louisiana guides to implementing your high quality curriculum is a great place to start. You can do that with a group of teachers who are experienced in that curriculum to determine when specific tutoring lessons could be applicable to students within the scope of that particular program. These resources could also be used as like a template or a model for building your own similar tutoring sessions with content from other high quality curricula. So those are just a couple of ideas there. 
The next question we thought folks might have is, are there other ways to utilize these resources outside of a quote unquote tutoring session? So I hope you've gathered that we are really describing here a, a comprehensive idea of tutoring. This can be strategically planned and structured within um, a school day or a school setting in a lot of different ways. Um, and so these resources absolutely do not have to be utilized just within what one might think of a, a traditional tutoring session, like after school. So best practices outlined in Accelerate and in um, these resources that we're providing are applicable in any scenario. These are best practices for supporting students who have unfinished learning and mathematics. So these can be used in any extra math time. So that could be morning time, breakouts, small groups, win time, or after school tutoring sessions. The next question we thought folks might have, is it ever a good idea to do a session like these with a whole class versus like one to three students as we've been discussing here? And I think the answer is let the data that you've gathered through the diagnose phase inform those decisions. So as a as an overall blanket plan, these resources are not intended to be administered to the whole class ahead of every week of instruction. You, you would never get get through everything that you were um, intending anyway, and that is not the design here or the best practice. But based on interruptions to teaching and learning in the previous year. The diagnose cycle data may show the necessity for whole class support. So there may be times where all or almost all of the class has the same unfinished learning needs. And it would be appropriate at that time to administer this as like a whole class mini lesson, for example, ahead of that on grade level instruction in order to like scaffold um, and get students on that bridge up to accessing that content. So it could be appropriate. But again, let that data drive those decisions. Lastly, um, we thought folks might ask, do I use these resources with the same group, group of students each week? So the answer here is that it should depend on individual student needs and information that's obtained through the diagnose process. So while that's possible, um, what we don't advise and what, what isn't the intent here is to do any kind of identification for tutoring and then just leave those students in a static group and they go to tutoring each week and receive these resources each week. Students should attend tutoring sessions according to their needs. And again, that should be identified through a robust comprehensive examination of their needs. And then they should be, they should be um, receiving those tutoring sessions accordingly. So go through that accelerate cycle. And that's why um, it's so critical to utilize um, that entire cycle as a whole working together. So lastly, on this slide, we have an opportunity if you want to use a QR code, there's a there's an image you can scan if that's easier for you. There's also um, a short link here. We would love and welcome any feedback that you have on the Accelerate Math resources. Um, we have teachers across our state and folks at the department working on these resources. We would love to hear about how we can make them better work for you, any needs or wishes or hopes you have, um, any questions you have about the resources. So feel free to use that link or the QR code to access um, a form that it will take you to, to provide that feedback directly to us. Additionally, the same questions, suggestions, anything you have about the mathematics part of this work, you can reach out to us via email at stem at la.gov. My team answers that inbox and we would be happy to engage with you and see how we can support. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the incredible work that I know you all are doing with students each and every day. I look forward to hearing from you on how these resources are working in your schools and your systems. Thank you.